Hey everyone, this is Lucy and in this video I'll be walking you through 5 intermediate level AWS cloud projects. These are projects that will help you level up your tech skills and stand out when applying to cloud roles. A while ago, I shared with all of you 5 beginner friendly AWS projects. If you haven't seen it already, I'd recommend taking a look after this video. But if you've already built some of those or you're past that beginner stage, you might be wondering what next? Well, the thing is, certifications and beginner level knowledge can only take you so far. What really sets you apart is being able to talk in detail about complex projects you've built. You'll need to be able to explain your architectural decisions and show employers how you've built solutions to real life problems. And that's exactly where my intermediate projects come in. Each one teaches you common real world architectural patterns so that you can build your confidence and also have something to showcase in your portfolio. I've linked my full step-by-step -step course for all five projects in the description below. And if you want to get a copy for yourself, you can use the code YouTube10 for 10% off. I'll also be releasing a five advanced AWS cloud projects video soon. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay updated. All right, let's get into it. Project number one is to create an event announcement system with SNS, Lambda, and API Gateway. This kind of system is useful for setting real-time alerts, and later I'll be sharing some situations where it will come in handy. Now, here's the architectural diagram of the project and the steps you'll need to take. First, create the front end using HTML, CSS, and an events.json file to store event data. Next, host the front end on an S3 bucket using static website hosting. After that, set up Amazon S SNS to manage email subscriptions as well as send out notifications. Once that's done, you'll need to create two Lambda functions, one to handle subscriptions and another one to handle event creation. And finally, expose both Lambda functions using API Gateway. This is where you'll set up a subscribe endpoint and a create event endpoint that your front end can call. By the end of the project, you'll have a complete end-to-end -end application that models how serverless systems are actually built in production. If you want to become a cloud engineer or a solutions architect, this is a great project to showcase on your resume. The estimated time to complete the project is around two to three hours and you can build it within the free tier as long as you remember to delete everything shortly after. Now here are three common situations where an event announcement system like this may be useful. The first is in event promotion. You can use it to collect emails and send announcements for upcoming company events. Next, it can be used for sending early access alerts. This works well for companies who want to notify employees when new products are being released for testing. And thirdly, you can use it for something fun like birthday shoutouts. You can connect the system them with an internal team calendar and automatically notify your team when it's someone's birthday. For the complete step-by-step -step tutorial to this project, as well as the other ones in this video, remember to check out my five intermediate projects course in the description below. All right, let's move on to project number two. Project number two is to build a CSV data pipeline with S3, Lambda, Glue, and QuickSight. This pipeline will automatically process CSV files and visualize the results in a dashboard. Now, this is a super useful project for analytics, reporting, or when data needs to be cleaned, transformed, and visualized without the manual work. Here's the architectural diagram of the project and the steps you'll need to take. First, create three S3 buckets, one for raw CSV files, one for process data, and the final one for the transform files. This sets up the storage for the pipeline. Next, configure IAM roles and policies to give the other services access to these buckets. After that, set up a Lambda function that gets triggered whenever a new CSV file is uploaded. This function will clean the file and move it to the process data bucket. Then use AWS Glue to perform a detailed ETL, which stands for Extract, Transform, and Load. And finally, connect Amazon QuickSight to the final S3 bucket to visualize the data. Once the project is complete, you'll have an automated serverless data pipeline running on AWS. The estimated time to complete this project is around three to four hours, and the cost should be less than $1 if you clean up the resources after. If you want to become a cloud data engineer or a data-focused consultant, this is a great project to build. Now, if you're looking for free tech courses to build up your skills in cloud, AI, cybersecurity, and more, I'd recommend checking out SkillUp by Simply Learn. It's a free learning platform where you can take self-paced courses made by industry experts, including partner content from Google, Microsoft, and AWS. Their courses are ideal for students and beginners, all the way to developers, engineers, managers, and executives, pretty much anyone looking to grow their tech skills. Once you complete a course, you get rewarded with a free certificate, which is a nice addition to your resume or LinkedIn. I'll leave a link to SkillUp in the description below, as well as a pinned comment, and I'd encourage you to take a look at their free courses. Now, if you want to build a project that 
can be useful for your day-to-day -day life, that's where project number three comes in. Project number three is to automate receipt processing with Textract, Lambda, and DynamoDB. This is a project I cover in this video, so I won't talk too much about it, but pretty much you'll be building a system that can help you keep track of all your paper as well as digital receipts. Here's a quick architectural diagram of the project. Amazon S3 is where you'll store and upload receipt files. Amazon Textract is used to extract text from receipts. DynamoDB is used to store the data, and SES is used to send and receive email summaries. And finally, we have AWS Lambda powering the whole thing. The estimated time to complete this project is only about one to two hours, and it's available for free within the free tier. If you're interested in a step-by-step -step demo, I've included the Build With Me video in the description below. Okay, project number four is to build a cloud dictionary application using Amplify, API Gateway, Lambda, and DynamoDB. This project is where you'll create an application where users can search for cloud-related terms and get definitions for them. Just like what you'd expect from a cloud dictionary, right? Here's what the architectural diagram looks like and how to build it step by step. First, set up the front end by cloning a pre-built React app and hosting it onto AWS Amplify. Next, set up the data layer by creating a DynamoDB table and uploading pre-written terms and definitions using the AWS CLI. After that, create a Lambda function that retrieves definitions from DynamoDB when a user searches for a term. Then use APIs to integrate with your Lambda function to make sure the search term gets passed through. And finally, sync everything together and deploy your application. By the end, you'll have a fully functional dictionary that's hosted entirely on AWS. You can search for cloud terms and see the definitions for them. If you want to learn about API-driven applications and serverless design, this is the perfect project for you to build. The estimated time to complete the project is around two to three hours, and it's free within the AWS free tier. As always, just remember to delete the resources right after. Now, apart from the cloud dictionary use case, here are three interesting ways this type of system can be used. The first is creating internal knowledge databases. Companies can use it as an internal tool to help new employees get set up with technical terms or team-specific acronyms. Instructors can use it to build interactive glossaries for students. Instead of relying on static PDFs or outdated docs, learners can query the terms and get instant definitions relevant to the course content. And thirdly, you can even turn the system into a fun word-guessing game. The dictionary can be upgraded into a fun quiz where users match words to the correct definitions. Honestly, I treat all of these projects as just the starting point. Once you've built the base version, there's a lot of room to add in more features as well as repurpose it into something more unique. Okay, our fifth and final project is to deploy a two-tier web application using EC2, RDS, and an application load balancer. Now, this is a very common architectural design where you'll have EC2 for the app layer, RDS for the database layer, and an application load balancer for routing. This project also teaches you how to set up a secure VPC environment with proper subnetting and security groups. Now, here's the architectural overview and how you'll build it step by step. First of all, set up the VPC and networking. You'll need to create a custom VPC with public subnets for EC2 and private subnets for RDS. Next, deploy an RDS MySQL database. This is where you can run SQL commands and create a table. After that, launch two EC2 instances across different subnets to host a Node.js app. Once that's done, set up an application load balancer to route traffic to both EC2 instances. You'll need to also update security groups so that the ALB can communicate with the app servers. And finally, test the application to make sure it's working and accessible. By the end of it, you'll have a scalable and production style web app that's deployed on a two-tier architecture. Now, this is the kind of project that hiring managers love to see for roles that involve cloud deployment as well as infrastructure setup. It takes about two to three hours to build the project and it's mostly within the free tier except for minor charges for the application load balancer during runtime. So there you have it, five intermediate AWS projects to help you go beyond the basics and actually start solving real world cloud problems. If you want to access the complete step-by-step -step tutorials for all of the five projects, remember to check out my intermediate projects course in the description below. Please give this video a like if you found it helpful and let me know in the comments which project you're going to build first. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.